Yo, what is going on ladies and gents? My name is Bees and welcome back to a brand new Paladins video. Today we're going over one of our new styles and hopefully a weekly video now, which is going to be Coach Bees. Today's session is going to be a ranked match with Khan and it's a particularly good one because there's some very strong individual players in this match who know exactly what they're doing. So it's very good to give an oversight on how to counter play styles and how to play the character correctly. Uh, if you enjoy this style of video, please let me know which characters you'd like to see in the future. I will of course choose more meta viable characters as they're easier to explain and how to play in pretty much all situations uh, hopefully you enjoy the footage and if you do please don't forget to like and sub all those amazing things for bees and of course i hope you have an absolutely fantastic day so the first thing that we need to do is look at the enemy composition where we think that they're going to be positioned and then where at best we are going to be able to stop them from pushing us or to gain an advantage pushing them uh, so when you're looking at the Tyra and the Tiberius, both of them really like the window area or the left side um, of the map from uh, from our side perspective. Uh, they don't really do... Tiberius can do okay on the right side because uh, his jump will actually allow him to engage. But if he was used his jump to engage from the right, then he's kind of leaving himself a little bit vulnerable. Um, and Tyra, of course, can't really push the right side because it just takes forever to walk around. The Ash here probably going to be going to the left-hand side and then Terminus, of course, to the point with Grover being more of a middle position to the back of the point. Uh, so from that, I can tell that the left side is going to be the strongest position for me to take. Go full left, try and get an angle here. As soon as Tiberius takes the high ground, we're going to try and focus him because as long as Ash's shield is up, there's no point in trying to poke her. Uh, we do manage to get the kill there on the Tiberius. Uh, now the Ash shield is down, what you want to do is continuously poke her. Now a lot of things that people have trouble with the Ash at the moment is a lot of people play the shield talent on Ash. Um, so if you don't actually go close enough to give her the resets on the right click, she becomes a lot more vulnerable. People try and get close to her and try and push through the shield initially, but that only means that then you're giving her the opportunity to get a reset really easily. Uh, we are actually with one person down now. I'm just going to continue holding this left side here, poking towards the point or to whichever characters I actually can. Uh, obviously, with the Grover currently, uh, you need to wait a little bit later in the game before you can have the quarter eyes to actually shut down the Grover heals because they're very significant on a lot of characters. Um, Ash pushing to our back line, so I'm trying to move backwards against to, towards our team, help them out a little bit. Barrack is going to fall here. I do manage to pick up the Terminus. And obviously I have to try and touch point here because they're on overtime. Unfortunately, that means I died to the Tyra. Uh, we're just jumping on the point here now. Try and keep it alive. But unfortunately, this point is pretty much done for us now as they capture it. Uh, once I've respawned, I take the left side again. Pushing towards the right gives them way too much of a free open angle against me. Uh, as they try and push me out here, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to try and fall back. The thing we messed up most with this draft is having two of our tanks be very dependent on their shields. So the longer the game goes on, the more wrecker they have, the more safe that we actually end up having to play. We're just going to try and poke out the Tyra here, try and not let her get in to do more damage to the team. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have any DPS with me, which is becoming a big issue a lot of the time when I'm playing in this round, is that I don't have DPS to help me out a lot of the time, which is a bit of a misplay from our team. Respawner here, jump onto the edge, try and get a ult off so I can throw someone into the water down below. Unfortunately, the Ashlers get a shield up just before I manage to get them. Um, Damba ults the Terminus here, so of course we're going to try and burn him down. Get back into base while we still have some HP. Unfortunately, gets stunned by the Ash here. Thought I was going to be able to miss that, but didn't in the end. And uh, there's no way we're going to be able to touch here, so I just try and retreat back to the point and not give them any more credits. Again, same as last round now, we are going to push towards the left-hand side of the map. It is the most advantageous place that I can take, even though it didn't work last round very well. Once Ash drops the shield, keep my distance away from her. Again, not to give her the resets. Poke down the Tiberius from the top. Now Ash's shield's gone, I'm going to push aggressive. Unfortunately, the Grover does have ult available, so there's not really much I can do against that. Wait for the ult to end, get the reload in. Uh, their Terminus ends up falling. Uh, because this, because he's in the back line, I'm going to push towards him, just to make sure that he's not too free uh, with my teammates. Because if I don't go back and help them and one of them dies in the back line, it does kind of become my fault. Try and poke him down. He does manage to get away again, unfortunately. But they don't have much capture time here. And we are charging up a lot of our ult here. Once the uh, Karn ult's online, it is pretty much a free pick for us. Which is very, very, very strong. Get the dash onto the Terminus there to confirm the kill. Now the Ash on the point can be focused down. She's very low, tries to dash out, gets a heal. Unfortunately, I can't really push too aggressive here because if I push into this as they respawn, my position will be out and I will be the one that ends up getting picked. So see the Tiberius is low, so we can push up a little bit just to try and get the kill on him and try and stop others from getting in. 
Staying cautious now. We don't really know where the position is until the uh, until the Cassie ult comes through there. Fall back a little bit. Wait to get to the point. Going to ult the Ash instantly. As soon as the Barrack ults, I'm going to push in there. Because not only does that save me from uh, the incoming damage from the enemy teams, but it also helps out from killing the Ash a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to fall there. Thankfully, we did manage to save the Cassie there from the Drogo Salt. So Ibira's pushing on the healer. I do try and get the Q on the Damba, but unfortunately pushed it a little bit too far away from me, so that doesn't actually connect. But we do get the point fight from this, giving us a 1-2 now, rather than being 2-0 down. Taking the left side here, let myself regen just those last couple hundred HP, just so I'm a little bit more survivable. Poking out the Ash. Uh, when I see there's have too many angles on me from the Grove of the Tiberius and the Ash, I decide to fall back because I'm not going to be able to do enough to actually help out the team from there with so many people looking me down. Continuously fall back here now as they try and gain advantage of map control. Uh, Barrack does push in, unfortunately, now, uh, which ends up being the reason that he dies. He kind of pushed into a bit of a, a sketchy situation. These later rounds, uh, you really have to be conscious of when the Ash has the ult available, especially when she's in those inside areas. The roof is so low that as soon as she uses her ult, it's going to land straight away, and it's pretty much an instantaneous stun that you can't dodge. So it's something you have to be very cautious of, whether you don't have the resilience online yet that you kind of stay away from being inside against her in those moments uh we do get the tyra here i was turning back for the tyra again you should always try and turn if there's someone behind you as you're off when you're playing the off tank unless the advantage you're gaining from pushing is far too big to lose you should really try and turn back um against dps or tanks that are in your back line because you need to save your your dps and you need to save your healers more than most other things especially if the ground that you're covering isn't that important as i say but that's something you need to judge by yourself uh, obviously in that situation we hadn't really gained too much ground further forward from the cart uh, so we weren't going to lose much if I went back and of course I wasn't going to be able to get many kills on my lonesome there as well so it was worth to fall back in that situation now we do have ult available but we only have 50 seconds left on the clock something that I'm conscious of in this situation is going to be the fact that if we don't push this it's going to be going to 3-1 um, so if I use my ultimate and it goes to 3-1 and we start next round without a card ult, we're in a very bad situation. So at this, situ at this point in time, I'm pretty much decided that I'm not going to be using my ultimate and instead just going to be um, trying to stay back a little bit, try and get poked, see if we can get a pick at one point. Tiberius does fall low and messes up his jump a little bit, but unfortunately the angle that he landed in, if I was to push into that, it'd be really dangerous for me facing down all of their DPS and their tank. Try to take the inside here. We've got rid of their terminus. So poking down their secondary tank now is pretty important. They are forced out. Uh, and they are very low in the back line. So we're going to continue to try and poke them just to keep applying the quarter eyes. Ash ends up ulting. This is amazing for us. Uh, making sure that the Ash doesn't have ult for the next point fight is a massive, massive advantage. And I'm just going to end up dying on the cart here. Probably should have just retreated and not given them the credits, but... Sometimes, you know, you just try to stay a little bit longer than you should. Uh, this time I've gone for the right-hand side rotation. I've gone left the last two times and I have ult available. So essentially what I'm doing is instantaneously trying to get the, um, the Terminus. I think that kill on the Terminus was a misplay personally from the Drogos. We really should have just thrown him into the water. Because now we've used two ults to counter his one ult. Whereas if I throw him in the water, he's not actually able to use his ult because he, he's died to... Um, to off-map collisions rather than it being a player death. Um, because of that, we, as I said, we use two ults for that. I'm going to hold this back position here. Not many of their teammates are up here, so I'm trying to get a little bit of poke. Unfortunately, I get poked out, so I have to leave before anything too detrimental happens to me, aka I die. We lose the barrack on the point, and they are taking over quite high towards getting a capture here. Dambarol comes through, which is insanely clutch, gives Cassie the touch. I run through, use the Q to try and save the Cassie, shield up for the Cassie, and then kill the Terminus from the back end of the Dambarol. Ash tries to dash after the Cassie. I'm going to obviously dash her so to cancel that from her. Now with Tyra poking me down pretty heavily, I wait for them out of quarter eyes, use my Q. Siberia is very low here. Thankfully, the Cassie manages to hit the shot and that's going to be him killed. We are on 62% ult charge here. Now they're pushing a lot. We haven't pushed in very aggressive to get to dismounts. So they have got quite a good bit of ground against us here. Thankfully, the Terminus isn't pushing in too heavily. Um, Ash tries to get the touch and she isn't just milliseconds away from getting it, which is amazing for us because they had a very good position to retake in that situation. Uh, if Terminus had pushed on a little bit more aggressively, maybe, then it could have been better if we had been more distracted by him rather than the Ash getting through. She might have got through a little bit sooner. But thankfully, that wasn't the case. We do manage to pick up the second point fight for our squad. Uh, 
Tiber uh, Tiberius using ult there just as an escape. Pretty good tactic, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm pushing back here because I want Angle to be able to throw the Ash into the water as soon as the shield drops. That's why I'm holding this Angle here. Uh, the way she's shoulder peek and I don't feel comfortable using the ult, so I wait till the shoulder peek that I'm comfortable getting. Uh, because I had so many DPS here, I instead allow them to kill the Ash rather than throwing the Ash. It's a more securable way to guarantee that they die. And on top of that, it also, of course, gives my DPS more ult charge as well, which is very important. Now, uh, we start to get a little bit low here, so I'm going to drop the Q, try and heal myself and the uh, Cassie. Do a quick little dash there to kill the Tiberius in his dash. We don't want him using his right click to gain um, damage immunity. So having that ability to just grab him and do instantaneous damage while of course my DPS can hit damage as well is very important. Ash is in a really bad position here now. She's unfortunately not got anything to save her. Barrack walked close there, gave her a boot reset onto the shield, which is a bit of a misplay. Thankfully, we still killed her before the shield actually dropped. As Terminus gets in, I try to get close to him for a grab. Unfortunately, he gets knocked back, which puts him in a little bit of a better position, but I grab him and throw him behind. He's already used his dash, and I throw him at an angle, which he's not going to touch the point, which allows us to easily push it through. So on the last point fight here, obviously, I do not have my ultimate available now, which is a very, very detrimental. Uh, it's something we have to be cautious of and aware of. That I'm going to be more going for poke damage at the start to try and get that ult available, rather than just... Um, rather than just uh, trying to push in and be aggressive. Ash uses amazing ult there. She was literally one HP, so being able to survive there was amazing for her. She dealt a bit of damage on her Drogos and forced him into less favorable positioning, which he ends up dying from. But we do get the trade after he eventually dies since the Grover doesn't push in to heal. Ash was very deep. She was one HP off the ult. So the fact that the Grover didn't push in, she wouldn't have got um, substantial amounts of heals from him. Uh, shout on the point, heal up the barrack a little bit. Try and poke down at this Tyro, which thankfully dies to Damba. There must have been a Gore or something there. Grab the Ash as soon as possible, because we have our ult available. Take her out of the team fight. One of the best things we can do. We're going to shield up, get rid of Quarter Eyes, get the shout off, and get the kill there as well. And that's going to secure the win for us. Um, that's pretty much how you play the Khan. Khan is a very backwards and forwards kind of point tank you want to be looking where you can push advantage and actually save teammates as well because your shielding isn't that strong on khan as soon as you have wrecker on the enemy team especially with the double wrecker composition that they had with the tyra and the tiberius your shield drops very fast so you have to be cautious of where you're positioning but you pretty much want to act as a blockade uh, now sometimes you can be quite aggressive with khan if your teammates allow for it but given the fact that we had a drogos and a cassie it's more advantageous for me to kind of be as I said, a blockade to stop the Ash getting in, uh, to stop the other characters pushing into our backline, then it would be for me to push in. Because unless the Cassie and the Jogos push in with me, uh, it's not really going to amount to much. And as I said, that aggressive playstyle into an Ash with shield resets is not going to work well for us. And that aggressive playstyle into a Grover and um, Tyra as well, not really going to be the best for us because they work better. If you get too close to them, you know, they can Grover root you into Tyra Flames. And then if I try and push away from the Tyra, she's going to be able to break shield and kill me very easily. My, my shout's not going to do that much for me. And obviously when I dash as well, I become very vulnerable because I can't do anything about it. Uh, but most importantly, when you're playing Khan, you need to be conscious of your ultimate charge. You see in that game that I actually took the morale boost which is very 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 important in my opinion for Khan when you're playing against certain compositions like the Ash like the Terminus both of them are counted heavily by Khan ult. Terminus because as I said if you throw him into a environmental death zone he can't use his ultimate at all and the Ash as well because as soon as she uses her ult I didn't get it off this game but you can ult her out of her ult and allow your teammates to kill her uh, also very good when you're playing against the Terminus with the Khan is the fact that the more you can kill him with your ultimate, it takes him a very long time to charge up his ult. So if you know that he doesn't have ult available, you can ult him straight away, get him out of the fight and make sure that it takes him longer to get that back. Anyway, ladies and gents, hope you've enjoyed this little session of Coach B's. If you did, please don't forget to like and sub. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments of characters maybe you'd like to see this for in the future. Hope you're all having an amazing day. And as always, I'll see you again tomorrow.